I both love and can't believe that I get to say this in 2023. But how's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Banished. It has been five years since I last played this game here on YouTube. It has been about five hours, give or take, since I last played it in general, because I had to sit down and relearn how to play Banished. Now, if you know about this game, you will be aware of the type of adventure and roller coaster that we are about to embark on. And if you don't know about Banished, then I suspect that either by the end of this episode or within the first few episodes, you will be convinced to try it out. This game came out almost 10 years ago. It was early 2014. It officially released. So earlier this year, we revisited SimCity 2013, which turned 10 years old this year. We're now revisiting this which is 10 years old in like five or six months. It's, I feel old. Revisiting games like this and SimCity makes me feel old. Now, without any further ado, we are going to get started with a new game. We are going to go with a town that is going to be called Thatcham, which is the name of a town in a game called Going Medieval. I realized recently, I think that's where that first came up. It might've come up before, but I've used the name Thatcham a couple of times. The seed, I'm just going to randomize a few times, and this is what we're going to go for. So the terrain type will be valleys, the size will be large, the climate is fair, disasters are off, and medium starting conditions mean that we begin with five families. We will have clothing, food, firewood, tools, and construction materials provided. We also have a storage barn that has already been built, and there will be some seeds for fields and orchards available. Also worth mentioning, I'm running one mod. It is a visual mod that changes the texture of things like the grass, the leaves, cemeteries, rocks, and whatnot, just to make them a bit more crisp, a little bit more high definition, and the grass is a little bit more green than it otherwise would be. But other than that, this is completely unmodded. So let's jump in and play Banished. And as far as starts go, this is a good one. We have a river right next to us, which is gonna be a source of food for, well, from fishing. We have a lot of resources nearby, a lot of flat land nearby. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna pause because there's some things we have to set up. Now, if you do know all about this game and you know how this works, there will be either be a timestamp on screen or there will be like the YouTube chapters thing. So you can navigate through the video and skip this part. But if you don't know about Banished, allow me to introduce you to this little button down here and all of these buttons right here. So this first one gives us the town info panel. We can see that we are in fact called Thatcham and we have 16 people that are homeless. It is currently early spring of year one and the population breakdown is 10 adults, zero students and six children. So 16 people, that's actually not that many. There are some maps and some scenes that'll give you 20, 22 citizens. 16 is rough. That's going to make things a little bit more challenging, but we'll be okay. We also have our resources right here. So we have 120 logs. We have 200 firewood. We have 1,800 food. We have 60 stone, 40 iron, 30 tools, and 14 clothes. We have no alcohol, coal, medicine, or textiles, and we'll deal with that later on the average health of our citizens is five hearts the average happiness is five stars and the weather right now i'm gonna sound like a weatherman saying this but the weather outside is gonna be bright and sunny with a nice chilly two degrees celsius so that's that's what that number is there at the bottom right of this little panel the next panel that we need is the event log this is where things like births and deaths and storage being full or empty or diseases or disasters, everything will go into the event log. So that is going to be really important to keep an eye on. And we will be doing that all through this playthrough. Next up, we have a mini map. This is cool. It's cool because I can now see that there's a giant lake down here that I might be able to use one day, but I don't really have any intention on using it right now. We can also see that this river comes in on this side. We are about here, right in the middle. It is neat that we have this down here. But like I said, I don't really see us using it. We also have this over here. So we have another body of water, which again, that's neat, but we're not really going to use it. So we're not going to be using the minimap at all. The next panel is the professions panel. This is where we have every job that is available. 
and we can basically assign people as we see fit. So right now, the 10 adults are 10 laborers. And laborers will do things like chopping down trees, mining stone, they'll mine iron, they will move resources to a stockpile or from a stockpile to a construction site. But they won't build things, that is the job of builders, they won't farm, that is the job of farmers, and so on and so forth. So this is how we manage who does what within our colony. And then the last thing we're going to look at is this right here. It's the resource limits, it's going to live right beneath the town info. And this does what it says on the tin. It is the uppermost limit on resources within the colony. Now, a lot of these numbers are going to be increased. So 200 logs is going to go to 2000. Same with stone, same with iron. Fuel is going to go up to 500. And fuel in this case is basically firewood. So that's going to keep people warm during the winter. Coal can do the same thing, but I'm going to try and use coal for crafting. We can talk about that when we get around to it. Textiles, we're going to leave that be for now. Tools are extremely useful. If my citizens have tools, they will work more efficiently. And similarly, I can also educate them and get them to work more efficiently as well. But for now, we're going to say the upper limit on tools is 150. Food is going to have a limit of 50,000 because the more of that we have in storage, the less chance there is of everyone going hungry. Herbs are essentially medicine, so we'll say 1,000 on that. Clothes, we'll say 150. And then alcohol will say about a thousand as well. And that is about the basic setup for the user interface, the UI, the HUD, whatever you want to call it. That is about everything we need to know with regards to all of these components. The buttons in the bottom right do a bunch of different things. The first one is just the speed of the game. We can play, we can pause, we can speed it up, we can slow it down. This is just things like all of the HUD elements. We also have the ability to increase priority on certain tasks. We can show the paths that people will take between certain buildings and others. We have a camera location for fast. That's interesting. I've never known about that one. We also have a button, I think, to go to the town hall. And then this is help and reference material. So that's basically what this is. Everything else lets me build or destroy stuff. So that's essentially what all of this is. This one's options, but everything else is build or destroy. Now, in the spirit of building and destroying things, we can finally get to playing Banished now that I've explained what everything is, where it belongs, and why it is where it is. So, the first thing I want to do is figure out how exactly we're going to get food. And I think the way I'm going to do this is by going into the Removal and Destruction tools, and I'm going to say Remove Resources, and I want to just remove all of these... And actually, I'm just going to remove pretty much all of this. It's a pretty big area, but I'm going to say remove all of that. And then we'll go and prioritize removing all of this so that that all gets cleared out first. And I'm going to try and get a couple of farms back there because I think that'll be quite important. Now, I do want to deal with the homelessness problem as well. So what I'm going to do is figure out some housing. Now, we do have a boarding house. We can build this with 100 logs and 45 stone, and this is basically just a temporary place for people to live. I think that would be good, but before we even build that, I think we want to build a market. This is a localized area for citizens to collect food, tools, and fuel, and it fits kind of nicely in front of the, uh, the barn thing that we have here. So I think we can go ahead and place this. I think we can probably get away with, uh, with building this thing right about there so we'll go ahead and place it and then what we can do around it is actually place some paths as well people i think move a little bit faster on actual paths so we'll do that and then next to this is where we're going to do the boarding house so it's going to live right about there and so that's going to be distribution that's going to be housing but i've mentioned things like firewood i've mentioned things like tools and those are very important resources to have as well so what I'm going to do is go into, let's see here, resource production, and we're going to get a woodcutter. This is someone that's going to use, well, basically chop logs into firewood. And, I, you know, as I said, that is a kind of important thing to do. I'm also going to look at getting a blacksmith as quickly as possible so that we can stay on top of tools production. And the blacksmith can go right behind the woodcutter there. And then what I'll do is get a little bit of extra storage just next to the woodcutter as well since we're not really going to be using this space for too much else. So a little 4 by 7 stockpile right there will do absolutely no harm whatsoever. And so that'll be housing, distribution, that'll be firewood, and that'll be tools. 
So that's a lot of the basics other than food production, because that's what this space back here is going to be about. And you might have noticed in the professions panel, we now need 15 builders. So I'm not going to assign builders just yet because my priority really is on clearing this terrain. So we'll speed up to five times speed. We'll get the game running and my laborers should, and they are heading out here, chopping down some trees. They're getting some rocks. They're getting all the iron and just clearing that space. And I guess my goal, plain and simple, is to get some crop fields in here. So what I'm going to try and do is figure out where exactly I can put this. And what I want to do is get myself a little 10 by 10 square there. And I'm going to try and leave a gap between these. I'm going to try and do... I think I'm going to try and do three of them if I can get away with it. Now, during what little testing I did... I found that 11 by 11 was a pretty good number. You can have one farmer deal with one 11 by 11 field, even though the game is going to recommend two or three farmers for a field of that size. But one farmer can deal with it, and they will get a reasonable enough harvest, so we'll give this a shot and see what happens. We're also getting some complaints about the storage for logs, stone, and iron being near capacity, which it absolutely is. That's where this other stockpile is going to come into play. And hopefully... We can just prioritize clearing all of this out and getting these farms up and going. It is now spring. If we leave it too late, the farmers aren't even going to bother sowing seeds. So we kind of need my laborers to hurry up a little bit and clear all this space out. We just need... There we go. So we'll pause. We have potatoes and we have squash. Ooh. I don't know if either of those are particularly fast when it comes to their growth and their yield. I think potatoes do take a while. I don't know about squash. I guess we'll find out on that one. We'll go ahead and get a second farmer here. And then this field any second now should be good to go. We just have to clear this one thing out of there. And I'm going to take a chance and say two squash fields, one potato field. And I think... I think we have... I think we have stuff being sown here. I think... We might be okay. We might end up with a harvest. It might not be a great harvest, but I think we do have some crops being sown here, so we will be all right in that regard. And as you can see, we're already consuming stuff. We're down to 1,600 food from 1,800, so... It's definitely, definitely important that we, uh... That we stay on top of this. We need to make sure that we have food coming in. Because here's the thing, right? It's all well and good to have food to see us through winter. But once the spring comes along and we, if we have no food, we're not going to have more food until the end of summer, until the next harvest. So we need enough to last from one harvest to the other. So I think what I'm going to do is we'll slow down a little bit to two times speed. And I'm going to go ahead and immediately look into getting myself a fishing dock. Because what this will do is essentially give us food year round. And that's going to be really important. So I think what I'm actually going to do is build it down here. I think this is a good spot for it because what I can do is potentially build another one over here. Yeah, I absolutely can build another one over there. So if the radius of these guys overlaps, I think they're a little bit less efficient. But if I build them far enough apart, which I can do, they should be fine. So we're going to build one there and I'm going to build one right about... I'm going to say there. I don't think they overlap. I think, yeah, just about. Look at that. That is actually, that is about perfect. So that's exactly what we're looking for. I'm not necessarily going to say that we have all of these fishermen and all these farmers right off the bat, because like I've said, we do need to stay on top of wood cutting. We do need to stay on top of tools. And I think what I'm actually going to do is prioritize building that wood cutter. That's the one thing that I want to make sure gets built. Then it will be the boarding house. And then it'll probably be the market and then the blacksmith. We can live without tools. We absolutely can live without tools. We'll just be, well, worse off without them. So we're going to try and avoid doing that. But only having 16 people in the colony is, it's going to be a challenge to be, to be honest with you. It is, it is going to be a challenge, but we'll, we'll hopefully manage. Now let's speed things up just a little bit. It is now early summer. We have a 16% yield here, 28% here, 17% here. I think what I'm going to keep an eye on is which of these gets harvested first. And then at the end, which of these we have the most of. Because it's possible that potatoes might take longer to grow, but then have a stronger yield. I have no idea. 
Also, this thing is now ready to build. All of the resources are here, which is why you can sort of see the footprint of it. We need some builders before they're actually going to, um, well, build it. So what I'll let my laborers do is just start moving the resources around. We'll get everything ready to build. And then we'll assign a couple of, uh, a couple of builders to actually handle that. I think what we'll also do is get a road that goes down there and some roads that go just between all of the farms so those guys can move around a little bit quicker. We can also get a road at the back here for the, uh, ooh. Well, that is interesting. So we can't get a road that goes straight across here. We're gonna have a little bit of a gap in the uh, in the road. Hopefully my, hopefully my people can still walk across there. I think they can. Yeah, they absolutely can. So they can still get to that, uh, that fisherman's hut. And then for this one, it looks like kind of a similar story. We can sort of come down here and all should be good. So what we'll do is go to there and we'll go to there. And that'll give us a road for the blacksmith. It goes nicely around the woodcutter, straight down to the fisherman's hut. And all should be good right there as well. We're also looking pretty low on resources already. So I think what we're maybe wanting to do here is just send my laborers out a little bit. Yeah, we're low on stone. So I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's do a pass on just stone. For now, we're actually, well, we have 93 stone. We have zero iron. So we'll do a pass on both. We'll clear out, I guess, a bunch of this space for stone. We have a bunch of iron down here as well. So we'll clear out all of this. And uh, that might be a bit of a distance for them to cover. So go and get all of that. But it should be all right. And I mean, looking at this, we are probably going to be fine. In fact, we could probably go ahead and assign maybe just one builder for now. And I think they will most likely start working on the woodcutter. I think that one's still prioritized. So that'll be good. We'll get one, you know, one builder working on that. We'll have a couple of people head out to start gathering more resources. The farmers are doing their thing. And here's the cool thing about farmers. I forgot to mention this. Farmers, when they are in the off season, will just function as laborers. So once their harvest is done, they'll start moving things around, chopping trees down, all that good stuff. So farmers are really, really useful. You can't really have too many of them. And looking at these fields, oh, it's late summer and we don't have a full harvest or a full yield anywhere right now. That's a bit of a worry. I guess we'll speed things up and see what happens. It is possible that we'll have a late winter. And what I mean by that is eventually snow is going to come through here. And it's it's possible that the snow isn't going to hit until the middle of autumn, the end of autumn, maybe early winter. So if that's the case, these crops will have more time to grow. And I mean, 87% isn't bad. 61% isn't ideal, but they've actually just started the harvest here already in early autumn. So whatever we get is, is what we get. We still have a thousand food left, which... I mean, that's not bad, so we'll see how things go. Thankfully, the barn isn't too far away from everything and the woodcutter's done, which is really good timing. So let's get one woodcutter in there and let's prioritize constructing this guy. We kind of need the uh, the boarding house before we get in the market because frankly, the boarding house is going to stop people from freezing to death once the snow hits at the height of winter. So that one builder is doing all right. Definitely, definitely doing all right. And everybody else is doing a pretty good job at going out and getting the stone, getting the iron and and all that good stuff. So we're also above 2000 food right now. This has actually been this is a pretty good start, to be quite honest. This is the best start I've had so far during all of my testing and revisiting the game. So absolutely no complaints from me right there. That should be enough food to see us through. And then the wood cutting as well, or the uh, the firewood. Yeah, the wood cutting is at 300, so we should be fine. We we should be okay. And like I said, it's now late autumn and we haven't seen snow yet, so we're not losing any crops to the weather, which is fantastic news. Uh, this thing is done just in time, so everybody should now be moving into, uh, into here. No one's homeless. My food stores are going down. But admittedly, they moved 500 potatoes and 500 squash into the boarding house. So that was really perfect timing. That was really, really perfect timing right there. That was, I, I couldn't have asked for better. So 
I'm kind of pleased with that. I really am. I'm I'm quite pleased with that. We have these guys going down and getting some iron. We've got a hundred stone, 192 wood, uh, 11 iron in storage with more on the way. So honestly, not a bad start at all. The main thing I'm concerned about is going to be the blacksmith. We have all the resources here, though. So wherever my builder happens to be, I guess. Oh, they were working on the market. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, we have 10 laborers because we only have one child right now, which is kind of scary. Uh, ooh, this might be a really rough start. This this is a good start, but this might not go well long term. Let's get one vendor and that one vendor will start moving things like firewood and, and iron and food and logs and all that stuff into the market to, uh, you know, send it out to the people. So. Despite the fact that, you know, they're they're taking all this food, it's still in storage, so it's it's gonna get given out to the people that need it. And that should be fine. Uh the reserve of tools. We just got a notification that that's getting a little bit low up here in the top right. So thankfully, the blacksmith is being worked on. So no worries in that particular regard. We're still at fifteen hundred food, twelve hundred food, a thousand food. Oh my god. Where is all the food going? I mean, it's early spring and we still have 900 and the uh, the farmers are getting to sow their seeds in early spring. So it's not the end of the world. And we've also just had a bunch of kids born. We've got Alfredi. We have Crystal with a CH. We have Len and we have Cade. Not bad. Not bad at all. I would say this is this is honestly the best start that I've had so far. We don't have any unique houses. We don't have anywhere for people to live specifically. We don't have a blacksmith yet. We don't have fishermen yet, but we have food and that's, that's, that's nothing to be sniffed at. I'm quite pleased about that. I, uh, I genuinely, I'm genuinely quite pleased about that because that is, uh, it's, I won't, I'm not going to say it's rare, but, uh, the amount of times I sat down to kind of relearn this game and what would happen more times than the not is that I would frankly have everybody die pretty quickly. I'm also going to get rid of this stockpile real quick because I want to uh, get a little bit of symmetry going on there. So we'll speed things up. They'll start moving that stuff out. I want to go ahead and get myself a little road like this. And I think I'm going to go ahead and cancel this bit of road in the middle. Because what I can do is just say that that is going to be a stockpile right there. And I'm going to say that this is also going to be a stockpile. Yeah, well, maybe. Can I can I do that as a stockpile? Stockpile's too large. Yeah, it's not gonna be an option. What distance is that? Twelve by so I could do I could do a couple of six by three stockpiles there. Which I'm not against doing. So we'll clear out this road and we'll do a little, let's see, six by three right there, six by three right there. And we'll just go ahead and connect these roads together like that and like that. And that's just a bit of extra storage. It's, it's good to have, it's always nice to have a bit of extra storage, so that'll work out kind of nicely. We'll speed things up as well, and the blacksmith is 90% done, which is fantastic. This guy is actually, we've hit the limit on firewood, so the the uh, the woodcutter isn't working anymore, which I'm okay with. That's not the worst problem to have, so they're going to be nice and warm through winter. And now that the blacksmith is done, it's going to be logs and iron to make tools, we can use logs, iron, and coal, but we don't have a mine to get coal right now. So we'll just go ahead and get ourselves a blacksmith. And as I've said, the limit on that is 150. So we'll hopefully end up with a good amount of uh, a good amount of tools. And I think what I'm actually going to do is tell these guys to chop down some trees right there. Just chop out every resource from, uh, let's see, about there. I think that should be uh, that should be pretty good. Just chop out all of those. Give me all those logs, all that stone, whatever irons in there as well. And so here's the cool thing. Here's here's the cool thing that we can do. We have this big sort of flat space here. What I think I'm going to do is give an order for my laborers to go out and just collect all of that stone from that entire space. So all of that is going to be mine. And it's the same with the iron as well. Whatever iron is out there, I want to collect all of it. And the reason I'm doing that is because we can get ourselves a forester's lodge. And what a forester does is selectively cut down trees and plant new seedlings. So we can place a forester somewhere like here. And that'll be an automatic way 
to get some lumber. But what we can also do is build a herbalist. And a herbalist is going to gather herbs and provide simple health and healing for citizens. And from what I gather, they will get the herbs from forests. So you won't necessarily find herbs out in the open like this. But if we go and look in here, we might have some herbs in this forest. We have some, uh, some mushrooms there. We have that might be a herb right there. So they grow in forests. Similarly, we can place a hunting cabin. And they will hunt in a forest because if we look over here, we have some deer hanging around this forest. If we look in here, I'm not going to bother looking. There's more deer over there in that forest as well. So deer, from what I gather, tend to gather in a forest. And we can also get a gatherer's hut. And that's going to be someone that gets roots and berries, which again, grow in a forest. So if I clear out all of this stone and all of this iron, it gives us more space to grow trees to make the forest more dense. Therefore, we'll have a more dense forest, more berries, more herbs, more animals, and it'll be a space where we can go ahead and get all of those good things. Now, in saying that, we're not going to be doing that today because here's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be leaving it there for today. A nice, straightforward, simple, not too long first episode of Banished in 2023. I'm so excited to be doing this again. I'm so excited to be back with Banished. I hope you are as well. We've got a pretty good setup here, I think. We've got our blacksmith. We've got tool production going. We've got wood cutting going. We're going to need to get some unique houses. So I think in the next episode, we're going to try and do two things. That's we're going to have two goals. It's going to be to clear out all the stone and the iron from this forest. And then it's going to be to get ourselves that little cluster of production buildings out here. And it's probably going to be a case of building a couple of houses out there, maybe, just so that they have somewhere nearby. I might build a storage barn out there so that the forest, not the forester, the gatherer and the hunter can put their stuff in the storage barn. But for the most part, it's going to be all about that, getting that cluster going, getting some unique houses going. And I hope we can grow the population a little bit as well. I'm hoping that, uh, I'm hoping that we'll be okay. We have 15 adults, we have five kids. Four of those five kids were born in the winter, so we'll see what happens. Anyway, I'm rambling. I said we were going to keep this brief, so thank you very much for watching, everybody. It has been an absolute pleasure, as always. And as always, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.